In a remote village in the Philippines, this little girl receives a vaccine, protecting her against a new flu virus sweeping across the world. This virus, which experts call H1N1, is causing the first pandemic of the 21st century. This vaccine will protect her and her village. An extraordinary journey to get this vaccine to remote parts of the world began months earlier. Donor countries, vaccine manufacturers, the World Health Organization and its partners teamed up to take on this unprecedented challenge. In April 2009, an unusual flu outbreak was confirmed in Mexico. It came late in the flu season and hit young people especially hard, alerting experts that something was wrong. Cuando llega una epidemia, el punto más delicado es la angustia y el pánico que puede tener la población de saber si se va a curar en el caso de que contraiga el virus. Primero de saber cómo no contraerlo y segundo si le llega a dar la enfermedad si se va a curar. Currently we're seeing at least five separate influenza events occurring or influenza-like events, two in the United States and three in Mexico in highly different geographic locations. At WHO headquarters in Geneva, the Strategic Health Operations Center was activated in the early hours of April 24th. The news quickly circled the globe. WHO stepped up its vigilance and alert. Scientific data was gathered and analyzed around the clock. WHO and partners all over the world tracked the new fast-moving virus, monitoring its transmission and geographic spread. By June 11th, the verdict was loud and clear. The two criteria essential for declaring a pandemic had been met. The virus had spread around the world and was passing from person to person in their communities. WHO Director General Dr. Margaret Chan makes the formal announcement. The world is now at the start of the 2009 influenza pandemic. Influenza pandemics, whether moderate or severe, are remarkable events because of the almost universal susceptibility of the world's population to infection. We are all in this together. And we will all get through this together. Response to the pandemic was swift. Stockpiled antiviral medicines were dispatched to countries that needed them most to treat the sickest patients. Health education campaigns were launched to reduce the risk of infection, urging people to wash their hands properly and stay away from others if they were sick. Vaccines are powerful tools to fight against new and rapidly spreading diseases. But time was needed to create a new vaccine. The virus strain was isolated by WHO's Global Influenza Surveillance Network and was shared quickly with pharmaceutical companies who could develop the vaccine. The same strict standards for producing seasonal flu vaccines had to be applied. The process took months and was strictly monitored. Producers had to optimize the culture conditions for the virus strain, manufacture the vaccine in bulk, ensure quality control and testing, and finally, package and release the vaccines. It's autumn 2009 in the Northern Hemisphere. Many countries have begun to schedule mass vaccination campaigns. But the new vaccine was out of reach for many developing countries. WHO identified the 98 countries and territories most in need and built a plan for vaccine donations. The 
The world's top immunization experts, WHO's strategic advisory group of experts on immunization, recommended that pregnant women, healthcare workers, and children receive the first available vaccines. With this information, WHO determined how many doses of vaccine would be needed. The UN called for international solidarity to support 95 countries and territories in need. The response was quick and generous. All the vaccine was pre-purchased at the beginning of the pandemic, which is for at least six months of production was already bought in advance by a rich country. So it was essential that the call for solidarity of the UN was heard. This spirit of solidarity extended beyond vaccines. Essential supplies like disposable syringes and safety boxes were donated, as well as much needed money to cover transportation and operational costs. In recent years, WHO, the UN, donors and partners invested to build national pandemic preparedness plans with avian influenza in mind. As H1N1 spread, countries were able to adapt these plans to respond. The operation was enormous in both scale and scope. Many obstacles, administrative, technical and legal, still stood in the way before the first vaccines could be shipped. There was a regional workshop where all the countries uh, in the region uh, involved in the deployment plan for the vaccines uh, could hear the best practices and the planning tools. Those planning tools were introduced and then we followed up at the national level, at the country level, with very concrete calculations, with very concrete plans and time-bound plans, when the vaccine is going to arrive to the country, how the vaccine is going to be stored, who is taking responsibilities for monitoring the cold chain, who is taking the responsibility to make sure that the vaccine, in accordance with the estimated quantities, will be delivered to the local health posts. Between December 2009 and July 2010, 81 countries had all met the requirements to receive the vaccines. The deployments began. In early January 2010, Mongolia became the first country to receive vaccines through the WHO initiative. Монголын одоо арт төмөнд амлсан амлалтаа бийлүүлж байна гэсэн үг. Энэ вакциныг үйлдвэрлэлийн горим журам тэр бүхний баталгаажуулахад хүртэл одоо дэлхийн нэг юм байгаа бол асар томлолт зааж байсан. Over the next 10 months, vaccines from 12 donors were deployed to 77 countries and territories. Transporting the vaccine is tricky business. The vaccine can only be used if it is kept between 2 and 7 degrees Celsius to avoid freezing or overheating. Maintaining this cold chain requires special materials and extra vigilance during transit. Everything has been okay, there was no, no problem during transport from the airport to here, etc. Did you, did you check the electrical uh, queue tank? Here is the result. Okay. 
it gives you the temperature of the vaccines to see if there were any breakdown. But as you can see here, it was always at five degrees. So there was absolutely no break with the cold chain. H1N1 vaccination campaigns could finally begin. The first vaccines were given to the most vulnerable, pregnant women. Children under two. People with compromised immune systems. Those with chronic health conditions. As well as healthcare workers. La verdad, la vacunación ha sido muy bien aceptada en Guatemala. Muchas personas han pedido la vacuna, a pesar que no habían sido incluidos en los grupos priorizados. Hemos tratado de priorizar realmente y vacunar a todos los grupos que tienen mayor riesgo de enfermar, transmitir la enfermedad o morir por esta misma. Health workers watched closely for adverse effects after vaccination. We need to monitor on what other, what possible complications or events that may occur after the immunization. Currently, our activity is ongoing. Uh, we haven't encountered any um, problem yet as far as reactions is concerned. Well, what was a big success is that we, we managed to have vaccine out uh, to uh, 77 countries and we distributed more, around 78 million doses. So this is a big achievement in many places where logistics is difficult. Um, we start now to have uh, a feedback from the countries, not all of them, because some of them are still deploying some vaccine according to where they, uh, they are in the world. Uh, but, but we know that, that many countries will have, when we look at it, a fantastic story to, uh, to tell about how they managed to, to distribute all this vaccine. Каждое такое мероприятие, конечно же, дает определенного опыта для медицинского, медицинского персонала в нашей республике. Como ministro de salud me siento muy agradecido porque además del de significado técnico y, y, y de salud que tiene para la población es un gran apoyo el que pudimos recibir y el caso que nos lo donara la OMS a través de la OPS a nuestro país eh, significó un gran apoyo eh, la posibilidad de hacer conciencia en la población de las medidas preventivas que se deben de tomar para prevenir cualquier enfermedad porque la vacuna es parte de una estrategia global de prevención. We've learned also how to better support countries to uh, be able to prepare um, for a pandemic response uh, and in this case how to effectively vaccinate their populations. Personne ne peut prédire de la conduite de ce virus qui est un nouveau virus. Nous ne savons pas quel est son devenir. Ce que l'on sait, c'est que nous demandons aux populations et aux pays de continuer la vigilance. La vigilance par rapport à cette grippe à H1N1 et lorsque le vaccin existe, de pouvoir continuer à vacciner les populations que nous jugeons à risque. The H1N1 vaccine deployment initiative achieved unprecedented results. Using the available vaccine wisely, driven by a sense of international solidarity, the world joined forces to protect the most vulnerable in this, the first pandemic of the 21st century.